You know, coming into Naruto Storm Connections, I never thought I'd hear two things. My guy is meta and Kurama Link Mode Naruto is actually good in the game. What's going on y'all? And today I'm going to be basically walking you through how to use Kurama Link Node Naruto, his goods, his bads, his infinites, his loops, all the cool things about this character and the teams that you might want to use with him. So starting off, this character has an amazing toolkit for items just because of the fact that he's an attack type. He has four different colors. Um, my favorite is definitely four and three. And as for supports, you want to go ahead and pick supports that can pick up off the floor. So characters like Orochimaru, Five Kage, Summit Sasuke, Taka Sasuke, Kimimaru, Karin. Um, any character that can an OTG off the floor and pick you up. Darui, these are just great, excellent examples as well as Itachi. But you guys go ahead and uh, you guys get the point of that. So my main team when I use this character is Shikamaru since that is in fact my main. And then I go ahead and slap on 5 Kage Summit Sasuke or Taka Sasuke depending on my mood for that day. So let's go ahead and get straight into Turing mode and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use this massive buff of a character so a lot of you guys may have not known this but this naruto has actually been the worst in the game since storm 4 he's really not been a good character that anyone picked and only recently after this balance patch did he receive a buff that made him probably the top three best narutos in this game right now i'm standing on that his first infinite is his three hit you're gonna go ahead and hollow step throw an item or a bomb depending on your situation if you really don't want to learn how to hollow step, that's fine. You can also just bomb an item into it or use supports, you know, to help you convert further. Works the exact same way. Then we have his four hit, which is the tail. We're going to go ahead and hollow step. Same thing. If you don't want to learn it, you can throw a bomb item to continue your combo. And then we have his five hit, the most difficult hollow step because you technically have to hollow step backwards because Naruto is in the opposite direction. So you're not going to hollow step forward like you normally would. You're going to hollow step the opposite direction of Naruto. And then you'll be able to land that, throw your items, get your damage, and continue from there. So that's all of his infinites. That's all of KCM to Naruto's infinites in the game. Next up, we have his Jutsu. So his Jutsus are awesome. He has two. He has his first Jutsu, his super mini-tailed beast bomb. You can now convert this in the air. You can do an air combo. Which leads me into his second Jutsu, which is his Tail Beast Bomb, which doesn't have significant range, but as you can see, allows you to pick up your opponent from off the ground after the air combo. So that's going to be your main tool after the air combo, and then you can continue from there and rinse and repeat. His first Jutsu is what you're going to be using 90% of the time because it has many, many different properties. So not only can you combo into his main jutsu extremely easily but there's also a unique property about this jutsu that allows you to combo after a certain amount of time after his grab and that's going to be one of the best mix-up tools for you is going to be grab into jutsu and it allows you to start over combos after being in the air and like i said his item set makes it 10 times easier for you double dash pick him back up you can do it again or this time you can just wait for them to land and then hit them with the second jutsu it's completely up to you and you know it's just completely optional and allows you free reign of, of how to play the character and it's also important again to pick characters that allow you to pick up off the floor so for example you do his first jutsu pick him up in the air now i have shikamaru or sasuke i can pick both but i'll pick shikamaru just for the sake of this and he'll pick him up again and then i can go ahead and do it again right and then this time i can continue from there and i was supposed to do chidori there but you get the entire point of what i'm trying to show you guys here and the amount of damage that is done there is can't be underestimated whatsoever so the second cool thing about his jutsu is that on guard if the opponent's guard is already red and it's really weak it has more than one uh hit frame so it kind of works like chidori uh on guard where you see it hits the opponent's guard multiple times and this Naruto has a similar property. So as you can see, he's red. And once it cracks, it'll leave this big ass bomb in the area that not only forces the opponent into a crumble effect, but it absolutely will hit him, supports, 
and everything else around him. So that's really, really good, especially when you have your guard pressure game up. So if he's already damn near red, and I'm trying to get him there as quick as possible, right? I can force that explosion, start up another combo, and go from there. With zero problem whatsoever. And it's a really, really good kit. Like I said, it just makes it so easy to continue comboing. <laughs> And it's ridiculous how easy it is. You can charge in between supports. Like, this character is it, man. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I'm telling y'all. Damage scaling kicks in after a while, so I would depend more on mix ups and loops. But as you can still see, he did took a lot of damage for just that much chakra, and his subs probably wouldn't have come back. So, this character is really that guy. But that's really all it is when it comes to him. Make sure you guys are taking full advantage of his item kit. Make sure you double dash into bomb to get your ragdolls. Make sure you guys are using your tags for stuns and to grabs. You can convert after that as well. Don't forget about your secondary jutsu. Use your characters for that garb support. And again, pick characters that allow you to convert easier for yourself don't make your job too hard now and you know reset as much as you can so that's pretty much it and we're gonna go ahead and hop on some online matches i'm gonna show you how to use this character now is what i would normally say i didn't forget about this man's awakening so normally i wouldn't cover awakenings but this awakening is actually really really good and he's an old classic OP awakening from Storm 4 and I just feel like I gotta show y'all how to use this so first of all back in Storm 4 this man used to be able to complete entire combos on guard they fixed that unfortunately fortunately you can't complete it anymore which kind of sucks but you know obviously it's for the sake of the balance so we need that but he can combo very well after his attack so let's say I got myself a little combo and I decided to and with that I can continue from there and the amount of damage as you can see is tremendous I would be careful with using his his YouTube because it does take up a quiet amount of chakra it's not like it's cheap none of his YouTube's are cheap but as you can see my god he does damage so that's basically how you use this awakening um, use him with supports you know be careful with your chakra I say just be careful with that you know, get that guard pressure going. And maybe one day I'll do an awakening guide because I feel like a lot of people don't know how to use giant awakenings and I can teach you guys even though you never will see me do it. But that's all for this character. Let's get straight into the online matches and let me show you the mix-up sauce with this man. My god. Let's go. Alright, so with these matches, I had to take off the audio from the actual clip itself because of copyright music and I was streaming at the time. So there's a lot of background music and background stuff going on. But if you guys want to check out my streams and I will be doing more character specific streams going forward, make sure you guys go ahead and lock in Mondays and Tuesdays, 8 to 12. And that's where majority of this gameplay actually came from. So during this match, I knew a lot of my fundamentals with this Naruto, but in the next game, you're going to actually see me learn something new, which is something that I taught you guys that I learned from a player, which is picking people off the floor with this YouTube from the grab. So you're not going to really see me do that too much in this clip here, but most of this here is just going to be me using fundamentals and, uh, you know, playing neutral and just, you know, being better at making the decision making here and literally just comboing nonstop. This has to be my favorite Naruto in the game right now. I, I'm I'm giving up my Sage Mode Naruto. Like Sage Mode Naruto is still my favorite uh styler type thing in the game, but in terms of pure combos, resets, and just the way he plays, this is absolutely my favorite Naruto in the game right now. I gotta say that for sure. So I went ahead and hit him with the ultimate there. And like I said, take advantage of your supports, take advantage of your items, and that's gonna do a bit of damage there even with damage reduction so I got that out there and after that I'm not going to really give him too much time to rest from there on out I see that I have the positive on his guard pressure so I'm just going to keep 
doing jutsus and keeping him running since his health is so low and use that switch tech that i told you guys about and then finish him off with sasuke from there because there's really no reason to keep him alive but of course i miss my shuriken so it's all right though chidori finishes him off we got that round and then we're gonna go ahead and get into the next room so at this point my plan is the exact same just it seems like he's really bad at neutral and he's not good at guessing uh, you know what I'm gonna do next especially when it comes to mixing in my character so my goal at this point during the stream was to literally just guard pressure the shit out of him and keep forcing him into sub traps because he's terrible at reading those so I'm just gonna keep doing that over and over until he either learns the matchup or it gets looped and as you will see in a second he clearly did not learn his lesson so he's gonna get looped so we got Shikamaru that spot on beautiful counter that I pulled off that was literally frame perfect. And then I hit him with the ultimate after the bomb. Again, this is just the pure reason for why his item kit is so fucking good. The fact that I can do that after a bomb and the amount of damage that it gets after that is insane work. Absolutely clean. So now that he's on the floor, again, I have to just pressure him, get him into the position where he's throwing his subs out the window and you know, just try to be careful with the Rasengan. It's really the only danger I have, especially since he's a yellow bar. Um, I flinched there a bit because I thought he was going to continue the combo, but as you can see, like I was saying, he's not going to sub management whatsoever. So now I'm in the plus. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that board too. I couldn't get up off the floor in time, unfortunately, um, but that's fine because I do still think I'll be able to win the matchup at the end of the day. So I'm going to go ahead and send out my Jutsu for my recovery frames. Either he got hit by it or I would have blocked. He caught me off guard with the pain switch. I didn't actually think he would switch. I should have countered there, but with my Jutsu, I may really get out of the way. And my plan remains the same. If he switches back to Minato, which I believe he does in this, then I could just go back to pressuring him. He should have probably stuck with pain since pain does have a better hitbox than my characters, but I'm still not worried because that beautiful whiff is going to go ahead and connect. That is one of the best things about this Naruto. That will definitely whiff sometimes and people will counter before his attack frame because of how his animation works. And I was able to finish him with that air combo and, you know, basically make it a win. So what I'm noticing here in my clips, though, is that I definitely play way better when I'm just talking, playing in the party and not really paying attention versus trying to actually concentrate. This is something I just notice i think on my own part so i am absolutely gonna have more footage in the future with me just playing in the background on stream because not only do i think that provides you guys better footage but it allows me to save my myself time as well so that after the fact i don't have to go online and look for matches because that can be very tedious and that's the main reason why a lot of these videos take so long so let's go ahead so that's basically my game plan moving forward um, so those were basically my matches and the rest are going to just have music because most of the time I have the exact same game plan and you guys can kind of learn at this point from everything that I've shown you guys and you will see me apply it throughout this, uh, rest of the video. So I hope you guys definitely enjoyed like comment sub, and I really appreciate y'all support. You guys have been so supportive and awesome. You guys keep it up. I'll keep it up and I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.